Hey YouTube, this is Primetime Pokemon. In this video, I'll be doing some Pokemon TCG online gameplay. I'll be battling with the ninth place deck from the Harrogate Regional Championships over in England. It would be a white Kiram deck. So I'm very excited to get battling with the deck anytime you can attack with non-GX Pokemon. It is a big advantage. So I'll head on over to the online TCG give the general strategy for the deck, and then get into battling. Here's a look at the deck checklist for the deck that I'll be battling with in this video. General strategy is pretty straightforward. You want to try and attack every single turn with White Kyurem. If you have one Fire Energy on this card, Freezing Flames can do 160 damage. Add a Choice Band to it, and it should be able to knock out a majority of GX Pokemon out there in one turn. Energy acceleration is very big in this deck. One way to do so would be to use Arceus Prism Star. If you have a Grass, Water, and Lightning type Pokemon on your bench, you can then accelerate three basic energy cards from your deck to your Pokemon in any way you'd like. And the main reason that Pheromosa is in this deck, really the only reason, is for Trinity Star. Plus the Pheromosa does have a free retreat cost. Aqua Patch is very useful at accelerating energy in this stack. You can get water energy into the discard with both Ultra Ball and then Zipstrika, the ability on it, Sprint, which also allows you to draw additional cards each turn. As far as the trainer cards go, this is a Shrine of Punishment deck. No GX cards at all in the deck. Cyrus Prism Star is very useful especially if your opponent is playing lots of evolution Pokemon. And then a couple of tool cards that are very useful. Wishel Baton makes it so that it's that much easier to ensure White Kyurem is going to be able to attack each and every turn. And then Choice Band will take down the GX Pokemon that I was talking about. Energy cards, 11 total, 4 Fire, and 7 Water. So let's head on over to Versus and see what's out there. I have been seeing lots of Psychic type decks lately with Giratina and then lots of Spread type decks as well. My opponent is calling the coin flip. I lost it, no surprise there. White Kyurem and Pheromosa. I will start with Pheromosa in the active spot just because it has a free retreat cost. Two Nest Balls a Wish of Baton, and a Lily. So a pretty great hand to start unless I get let loose. Mulligan by my opponent as well. This looks to be a Zoroark Lycanroc deck. It was a deck that was giving me some trouble with the previous TCG online video that I did. The Zoroark Decidueye. Starting with Ditto Prism Star in the active. I could do 20 damage with Pheromosa. Its weakness is fighting type Pokemon. Ditto Prison Star is a great card overall. You can use it to evolve into whatever Pokemon you'd like for a stage one. And I do get Judge. So there goes my great starting hand there. Judge is making a comeback in a lot of decks lately. Cynthia and two Nest Balls, so not bad. Two fire energy cards as well. So we'll do Nest Ball a couple of times here. Need to get a Blitzel out and the Arceus Prism Star. And I don't know if I want to risk putting a fire energy on the Arceus Prism Star or not. How many water energy do I have? Five. I do have all four. Fire energy, so I think I am going to put a fire energy there. So let's first retreat for the Arceus. Put the fire energy on it. I just didn't want to use Cynthia here and then be out of luck not getting an energy card. And luckily I did get one at the very end. My opponent's already going to scoop. They know that I've had a very good starting hand there and a very good first turn. So we'll take that win. Move on to the next match. And if you can attack 
turn one with that Arceus Prism Star, get three energy cards on a white Kyrim, you can do up to 190 damage turn two. So let's look for the second matchup here. And personally, I am a big fan of water type Pokemon. Even though Charizard is my favorite Pokemon of all time, water type is actually my favorite type. Probably because when I was young, I had a fish growing up, a beta fish. And then when I moved out on my own after college there, I had a fairly large aquarium stocked up with fish. I moved back to my hometown a couple of years ago. No pet stores or anywhere near where I live other than Walmart. And I don't have my fish tank up and running. I actually donated all the fish in that larger fish tank to a friend of mine that used to live near where my parents lived, where I grew up. So he definitely appreciated that. He was in the same boat, didn't want to travel and then just carry the fish in the car for a fairly long time. So this does look to be a Malamar deck, maybe with Giratina. That is not a good matchup for this particular deck, just because Giratina can do 130 damage every single turn, essentially, if there's several Malamar set up. So the Cyrus will be helpful. There's a white Kyrim. I think I'm going to put the Wishel Baton on the white Kyrim. I could put an energy on it, or I could try and get Arceus Prison Star in the active. I'm going to attach an energy there and then Lily for five cards. There's a Nest Ball and a Shrine of Punishment. I'll hold off on the Shrine of Punishment now. I don't want to lose it right away. Here I am going to get a Blitzel. Do I have the Arceus Prism Star? Yes, I do. So I could get that with the Ultra Ball. I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to assume that this is a non-GX deck from my opponent. So I'm going to get rid of the Shrine of Punishment. I use four, so that's all right. Shrine of Punishment and then the Lily. And then I am going to go and get the Arceus Prism Star. So I have the three types of Pokemon I need in play. So if I wanted, I could accelerate energy into play with Trinity Star next turn. Now I am just going to pass here and see what my opponent does. I do like the fact that majority of the Pokemon in my deck, I think all of them actually, have a one colorless energy retreat or less. So my opponent's going to try and put Pheromosa to sleep, and they did, and it did not wake up. So now I'd like to get Guzma, but that's not going to happen. I am going to Cynthia here. Shrine of Punishment would be useful. No water energy in the discard. I'm going to go and get another White Kyrim. I could use Abstrika's Sprint, but I think I'll pass on that. I don't want to get rid of the Aqua Patch. Attach the Fire Energy here. And then I'll just pass. I did wake up there, but they can put me back to sleep. My opponent has six cards in their hand. So not a good start for my opponent, especially with that NK in the active. They could retreat it right now if they'd like. I believe Malamar has a two colorless energy retreat. They're going to try and copy one of my attacks with the Mimikyu. Not sure why they didn't go and get something that would be more useful like a Tapu Lele, for instance, or a Marshadow. So a double colorless energy on Mimikyu. They're going to try and set up the Deoxys. I believe it does 120. Yep. So they are going to use Filch. Let's see. Would like to use another Wish of Baton on White Kyrim. Then use Cynthia, hoping for an energy card, and then I can knock out the Mimikyu. Oh man, that one hurt. 
So I think I may have to just sprint away my hand and then hope that I get an energy card. I have the energy recycle system to move back the fire energy. So I am going to use Nest Ball again, go and get a third white Kyurem, and then I'm going to have to sprint away my hand. I lose out on the Cynthia, but I would like to get a knockout here. Water energy, please. Oh man, what a terrible draw there. Rescue Stretcher, what's over here? One Feromosa. I believe I did prize, what, two water energy. So not good there. I could do 30 damage with Field Crush. I'm not going to do anything here just because Copycat would do nothing for my opponent. So not a good turn for myself. My bench is set up very nicely. Just need some energy. So now my opponent could get another Inke in play. This seems to be somewhat of a rogue deck and it was a good guess that they did not use any GX. So there is a Tapu Koko and an NK. What's their last card? They do not have anything good. So slow starts for the both of us when it comes to attacking. And of course, another fire energy. So I think I am going to use sprint. I would like to actually knock out the Deoxys right here or the Malamar. The Malamar would probably hurt my opponent more. I think that is what I'm going to do. Risk putting the White Kyrim in the active. And not being able to attack. So I am going to use the Rescue Stretcher since I'm going to lose it. I will put a Pokemon from your discard pile into your hand. Feramosa there, and then I am going to unfortunately sprint away the Cyrus Prism Star. But I would really like to attack your Water Energy, please. I have four of them. There's a Water Energy, two of them. So I can attack here, that is very good. Knock out the Malamar, and my opponent is in some trouble. I believe they can only do 80 damage with Mimikyu, and that's fine. White Kyurem is weak to Metal-type Pokemon. And then next turn, I could actually Guzma up something. Now, what does Psychic do? 20 damage plus 20 more, so it would do 80 damage there as well. But they need a, another energy on it, and they may be just trying to use... Flying Flip on top of Coco, they can retreat the Deoxys for, for free, and then just accelerate that, that discarded Psychic with Malamar, the other Malamar now. And there are ways to move damage around, so potentially you could use Flying Flip a couple of turns and then use something like Tapu Lele to move that damage around. There's another White Kyurem. I'm going to start getting some energy set up on this one. I could Guzma, and I think that is what I'm going to do to knock out the other Malamar. I'm going to go after that Malamar. Put in Feramosa. At first, when I was looking at this list, wasn't sure why Feramosa was in the deck. And of course, it's both for Trinity Star and the fact it has a free retreat cost. So I will use Freezing Flames and knock out the Malamar. There's a Shrine of Punishment, which does nothing. It would be a couple of turns until my opponent can knock anything out on my side with Tapu Koko. Unless they put... They can't. They're just going to use Copycat, I believe. They are going to just use Filch. Drop a couple of more cards. So I'll knock out the Mimikyu here. I could be really greedy trying for another Guzma. How many have I used? Two. I do have four in the deck. I would do the same thing. I would knock out the 
NK could actually knock out the Deoxys as well. What do I have here? Anything? No. I'm going to put another Wishful Baton here. And then I have to be knowledgeable about the cards remaining in my deck. I think I am going to just knock out the... I would really like another energy, however. I think I'm going to knock out the Mimikyu. My opponent only has three cards in their hand. They'll have four shortly. There is another energy. That is useful. So the lowest HP over here would be 110, I believe. Shrine of Punishment does nothing. Maybe they have a supporter in hand. But I don't think they do. They're just going to use Flying Flip again. I can knock out. And they're just going to scoop. So there is the pressure that this deck puts on an opponent. And I love being able to just goose them up whatever Pokemon I want to knock out. And really hurting my opponent. So 2-0 so far. I would say 1 and maybe like 0.1 wins now. Didn't do much that first battle. So 2-0 here, this may be a shorter video. We will see how the third matchup goes. And I am considering what to bring to a league challenge. I have one league challenge left that I'm attending before Team Up is released. Let's lose this coin flip. No surprise there. If I could attack with an Arceus Prism Star, that would be great right away. So there is the Arceus Prism Star, Nest Ball, and Ultra Ball, so I may be able to get what I need. I need the Blitzel, and then the Feromosa. I never know if I'm going to keep this hand, though, just because of Judge and then Let Loose. I like the deck box over here, both forms of Mega Mewtwo. It will be very interesting to see what happens with the GX Tag Team cards. Taking three prize cards when one of those cards is knocked out is almost a deal breaker. Tapu Lele here, so this may be another spread deck. Magical swap on Tapu Lele. Move any, damage, move any number of damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon to their other Pokemon in any way you like. That isn't as useful in a deck like the White Kyurem deck because you're not getting two prize cards for a knockout. Is this another Malamar deck? It might be. Looks to be with that Inke, so I'm going to do the same thing here if possible. I want to try and knock out the Inke as soon as possible. I'm going to have to be leery of the item cards that I'm using because my opponent is using Trubbish. Garbodor, of course. Trash Lanch on that card does 20 damage times the number of item cards in my discard pile. And I am for sure going to use one right now, maybe two. I might have to go and get Mars Shadow with that Ultra Ball if I do not top deck anything. So they're going to just put out the Tapu Koko and use Flying Flip. There's a Guzma. I don't think I'm going to use that, at least not right now. I'm going to hold off on the choice man. I think I'm actually going to get rid of that eventually. What do I have here? The Blitzel and then the Feromosa. And what do I have for the energy cards? Four and six. So I have one prized water energy. So I am going to go and get the Blitzel. And then I am going to put a Wishel Baton here. And then I am going to... Ultra Ball away, the Aqua Patch, and the Choice Band. And unfortunately, I do have to go and get the Marsh Shadow. I think that is my only option there. Hopefully, I can let loose into a supporter for draw support. That is fine. Did not do it. So I can attack with the Arceus Prism Star, but I can accelerate energy because I don't have the Grass type on the bench. Shrine of Punishment is going to be pretty useless. 
So if I would have been thinking, if I would have known what I was going to draw on that let loose, I could have put a Pokemon other than Arceus in the active and then use Guzma, but not really no way of knowing that I would have Guzma in my hand. So I'm going to attack. I actually can't use it at all because I do not have the necessary Pokemon on the bench. So I'll just pass there. I would have loved to have gotten the NK in the active. How many items have I used already? Four. So that's 80 damage by Garbodor. The Krosma GX over here. So this isn't a Shrine of Punishment deck. There's the Giratina that's going to cause me a lot of trouble. Take a look at it again. It's actually always better to discard the Giratina as possible and then pull it out of the discard pile. Being able to do 10 damage to two of my bench Pokemon. So now they're going to accelerate energy with Psychic Recharge on Malamar. No energy left in the discard. Still didn't get anything here. I am going to put the Wish Baton on the Arceus. I'll put the Shrine of Punishment out there. I could. I'm actually going to save that just in case I draw into an Ultra Ball. And then I can keep the Guzma. So another pass turn here. So for a deck that normally sets up pretty quickly, just can't do it. And I am going to potentially get knocked out with Giratina. So there's 130. It won't knock it out yet. And Giratina does do 40 damage to itself or any of the Pokemon. So they chose to do that 40 damage to Giratina. Still nothing that I can do. I am going to Guzma up probably the Malamar. That is going to hurt my opponent the most. And then I can put the Marsh Shadow out there. Hold off on the Fire Energy. I'll actually put it on the White Kyrim and then call it good. They just passed. And I'm going to do the same thing. Put a White Kyrim down. But this is a terrible start for the both of us. Six cards in my opponent's hand. They're going to pass again. Wow. Well, it's a quick moving game. Pass, pass, pass. They're going to pass again. Boy, this is fun. Yes, it is. Put that back there. No reason to have another Blitzel out there. Even if I was to draw into a Zipstrika, that would be great. Hard to believe that many cards in my opponent's hand. They do not get anything. So there's a double colorless. They can retreat it and then they can knock out the Marsh Shadow. Do 40 more damage to one of their Pokemon. They choose to do the damage to the Tapu Lele. I think I am going to put out the Arceus Prism Star and really no choice. Top deck something. Terrible. It really doesn't make any sense to do anything here. I'm going to have to put damage on the white Kyurem. This is just a terrible start. So I am going to retreat this, lose the energy. Should I do that or should I just let this get knocked out? Just a bad start overall. I'm just going to pass. My opponent can knock out the Arceus, do 40 more damage to whatever Pokemon that it would like. They are going to knock out the White Kyurem here. I can just move those energy cards to the other White Kyurem. That is useful. That is actually a help for myself because the Arceus is not knocked out. I really need to top deck something good. Let's go to the White Kyurem. Let's see, there we go, and done. Spell tag is not on the Giratina. I could put Arceus out here, could put White Kyurem. I'll put the Arceus. And there is a Nest Ball. So finally, I can accelerate things if I get the Feromosa, 
With that being said, I can't really accelerate too many energy cards because I don't want to put all the energies on the white Kirim. So now I can use Trinity Star. Knock out the Giratina a little bit easier. And then I'm just going to... Actually, I'm going to do more energy. Just because... With that Wishful Baton, then I can move the energy cards somewhere else if I'd like. Same thing goes, though. I don't have anything to move it to. So I'm just going to get the one water energy and move it to the white Kiram. So still such a terrible start for myself. Finally get that Trinity Star set up, and there's really nowhere to accelerate the energy to. Now I'm going to move the one water energy. Actually, I'm going to actually discard that with Aqua Patch. I can get that back. So I need to top deck something for sure. I will be able to finally knock out the Giratina. Boy, three Shrine of Punishment. Well, here goes nothing. And all they're going to do is they're going to promote the Tapu Koko, pull the Giratina from the discard pile, and then get enough energy back on the Giratina. Right now, they only have the one Malamar, so they couldn't do it. If they were able to get another Malamar set up, then they could... Just do 130 with the Giratina and knock out the White Kiram. It would be pretty much game over for myself. And this deck definitely gives me some trouble. It'd be hard to believe with that many cards in their hand. And they can't really do anything. That is surprising. I am going to get another knockout. I only have all four Shrine of Punishment in my hand. So I'll get the knockout here. Let's prize something here. Turn that over. Guzma. Wow. So if my opponent... They will for sure knock out White Kiram this turn. As long as they have a Psychic Energy in the discard, and they do. They also have Cynthia. So it's pretty much game over for myself. Only down two prize cards, however. I do have that free retreater in Feromosa. So I could Guzma up something and hope that my opponent can't get it out of the active Pokemon spot until I get something set up. Give me a couple of turns. But more than likely, this is a loss for the White Kiram deck. Now they're going to retreat and then do the 130 damage. And it doesn't make any sense to even move any of the energy to... My benched Pokemon. Maybe put one on Blitzel to give it a free retreat cost. That is what I'm going to do. I do have the one Aqua Patch. I need two Aqua Patch in hand. And of course I get a Water Energy card. There is nothing that I can really do. Well played. I don't know what my opponent is going to do. I'm going to Guzma up the Malamar. Two colorless energy retreat. And then I'm going to actually retreat this right into the Feromosa. Want to keep that Blitzel in play. Such a great game by myself. Not much you can do when you're dead drawing like this. There's Tate and Liza. They're going to put the Giratina back out there. And then they can also get some energy on some Pokemon if they like. But I don't think they actually have any energy here. They do not. So now I would say it is game over. I don't draw anything. Well, well played. And I am going to scoop here. I can't do anything. I could Aqua Patch get two energy cards on the White Kyrium. And then just have Blitz will be a sitting duck and get knocked out there. So a good game. Let's see what I can do here. Let's concede. Are you sure? Yes. So not good. 
Let's see if we can end this video on a win. But that Giratina causes lots of trouble because it can do 130 damage and just knock out that white Kiram. Turn after turn after turn if Tapu Koko's out there and you have two Malamar set up. So now we're facing a Psychic Darkness Colorless Fighting. Could be a Zoroark GX Lycanroc GX deck. I lost the coin flip. No surprise there. There's a white Kirim. No draw support in hand again. And it does seem like on the online TCG, just the cards that you draw into your hand is almost impossible. That never really happens in real life. This would be a Buzz Rock deck. So Buzzwell's weak to Psychic. Rock Rough and Lycan Rock weak to Grass. I'll have to Ultra Ball for something. The Shrine of Punishment will be useful in this deck. Here we have Knuckle Impact 160, Jet Punch 30 and 30, Absorption GX can do major damage. I am a huge fan of Buzzwool. I didn't exactly look at the types of the decks types of the energy in this deck. Maybe they have a Lola Ninetales. That is a great way to get multiple B strings in your hand as soon as I get four prize cards or three. This is an enjoyable deck though, just being able to do 160 damage turn after turn after turn with White Kiram. That's what I really like about Lost March. You have to be patient, but if you get, let's say, 10 Pokemon in the Lost Zone, not to and jump off can do 200 damage per turn and knock out pretty much any pokemon out there so there's another ultra ball i am think i am going to use let loose here so i'm put putting out the shrine of punishment i will put the wish of baton on the white kiram i think it could knock out freezing flames here in one attack but i don't think i'll be able to do that anytime soon. I'm going to Ultra Ball the Rescue Stretcher and an Ultra Ball and go and get Marshadow if I have it. And of course, I do not. I will get the Blitzel. That way I can get Zip Strike out there and use Sprint. So I'll attach the Fire Energy there and then pass. At least I'm doing some damage with that Shrine of Punishment. Hopefully I don't get the three Shrine of Punishment remaining all in my hand. Surprising my opponent has so many cards in their hand and they're not doing too much yet. I certainly need to top deck something. It has to be a Lily or a Cynthia. Really only 8 draw support cards in the deck other than Zipstrika. They are going to promote the Blitzel, I think. That is a bit strange. If And there is the knockout on the Blitzel, unfortunately. Well, this may be a quick game and I may have to head to the next one. They're going to get Zoroark GX set up as well. There's the Alolan Mock. They discarded that. There's Zoroark GX using its trade ability. You discard one, draw two. So another poor performance by White Kiram. And all my opponent needs is three energy cards total on that Buzzwall. It can knock out whatever it wants in my deck. So there's the knockout there. At least I'm spreading some damage around. And of course I do not top deck anything useful at all. Just passed my opponent. I am softening up the GX Pokemon. 160 should knock out most of them very soon. 
here on Lycanroc GX, GX Dangerous Rogue won't do anything right now, only 50 damage. So there is a Professor Kakui, so it's going to do 50 damage to White Kiram and then 30 damage to the White Kiram on the bench. And a nest ball here. I'll use the nest ball for the Pheromosa, I think. Or I could do the Arceus Prism Star. I'm using the nest ball just to get another card from my deck. Let me use the... I'll go for the Arceus Prism Star. There's only one copy of that card in the deck. It is not prized. Just have to pass now. I really could scoop at any time. They're going to be able to knock out the white Kiram. I'll move the one fire energy probably to the Arceus and hope that I draw into Lily or Cynthia. And then I would need a lot more to get another Blitzel out there and the Pheromosa. I guess it's not impossible. My opponent is only getting the one prize card for a knockout. But I would assume that I'm going to lose this one. My opponent is going awfully slowly. They do have the Diancie Prism Star out there now as well. So Jet Punch, I believe, will knock out the White Kiram 50 and then 30 there. So I'll move the fire energy to the Arceus Prism Star and then I'll actually promote the Arceus Prism Star and a water energy well let me get knocked out be by the Arceus I can attack of course with that Trinity Star like we found out last game Just no draw support. I wish they would have judged me. They discarded that supporter. That is the one advantage with the Zoroark GX decks is that you're always able to get more cards into your hand if you're stuck with nothing like I am. So there goes the Arceus Prism Star. Softening up all those GX cards as well and can't do anything. So there's Cyrus. I mean, I have no option but to use it. Make my opponent put probably the Ditto Prism Star and the Tapu Lele back into their deck. And then they can knock out the White Kiram for the game. So I'm just going to let this play out there and let my opponent win. Well played. Well played by my opponent. A terrible play by myself. Really nothing I could do. Really hurt with that Marshadow being prized. So on to the next matchup here. Make it about a 50 minute video I think. Let's win this last one. It is always disappointing too if you do some tests with the deck you're going to battle with in a video like this. You do very well and then just do terrible when it comes to actual recording. So this looks to be a straight fire type deck. So White Kiram should have a big advantage. Of course my opponent goes first. I lost the coin flip. As soon as I try and choose heads, then I'll go back to being tails. Make sure to put out the Arceus. I do have Cynthia and an Ultra Ball. I really should have put that Arceus out there. Too busy talking. So I will really be hurting if my opponent uses Marshadow or Judge. Judge would be hard to believe. This could be a straight Mag Cargo deck. They're using Heat Factory here to get more cards into their hand. So no Judge could, could use Let Loose, and they did not. So I was saved by a bad decision here. I think I do have the ability to accelerate some things into play. So I'm going to get the 
Blitzel, and then I need the white Kyurem. I'm going to get the Blitzel first, all four white Kyurem. In my deck, I'll put the Water Energy there. Use Ultra Ball, discard the Guzma and the Fire Energy, just so I do not have to risk not getting a white Kyurem. And then I'll use Cynthia. So a better start for myself here. And I did get another white Kyurem, plus some draw support for a couple of turns. So let's retreat this. I'll get three energy cards. So one, two, and three is what I'm going to do. Now watch, I will not get any energy cards anytime soon. So put one fire on each. And then the water energy, it doesn't matter on which one. So I am set up. I went a little bit risky not getting three energy cards on one white Kyurem. But I don't want my opponent to be able to Guzma up the white Kyurem with three energy on it and knock it out. So they're putting my cargo GX. Accelerate energy into play. And then discard the top five cards of your opponent's deck. That will hurt this deck if I use sprint a couple of times it is easy to run out of cards that is the the supporter that i would like to get next turn here so there's a nest ball still no energy out there orangaroo instruct get more cards into their hand I always have three that is a great combination with the mag cargo with smooth over i like the combination of Zoroark GX, Mag Cargo a little bit better. Just because Instruct, you do have to have fewer cards in your hand. So they were able to use the Crushing Charge. And they are going to discard the top five. There is a Water Energy, so I locked out there. And then I'm going to use Lily and then knock out the Mag Cargo is what I'm going to do. Wow, I have lots of draw support here. I will put this back there for the white Kyurem and then knock out the Mag Cargo. No Wish or Baton yet. Energy Recycle System and Blitzel. And my opponent just scooped. They're not happy with the weakness of water type Pokemon for Mag Cargo. That is understandable. That was a little bit shorter there. Let's do one more. I want to get more in depth in battle. One more battle here. I am getting some versus rewards and other things using a water type deck. Lost Thunder booster pack there. I actually had to trade for the white Kyrams from Lost Thunder. Only had, I think, one. And I've opened around 100 packs on the online TCG. That is what happens with such a large set. 214 cards in the base set, I believe. This is a grass and colorless type deck. Could be a Leafeon deck. Do I win the coin flip? I do. What a miracle here. Also could be an Alolan Executor Shuckle deck. My opponent gets an additional card. I had to mulligan. My opponent is taking their time. Maybe they had to play something they didn't want in that active spot. There's a Mars Shadow. I'm going to go out there with the Blitz. I want to save that Let Loose on Mars Shadow. I do have Cynthia, plus I have Shrine of Punishment, but I don't think I'm going to have to use it. I would guess this would be a Shuckle Alolan Executor deck. I do get to go first, so that is helpful. Probably use Cynthia. I don't want to risk not getting any draw support. There is the Shuckle that I was thinking. So I am going to, I think I'm just going to use Cynthia right off the bat. I'll put the Shrine and Punishment out there. 
and then use Cynthia. It doesn't make any sense to attach anything to Blitzel. There's a white Kyurem here. I do have Guzma, that's helpful. So not the greatest of start. But at least I have something set up on my bench. Shuckle here. The idea is to get some energy in your discard pile. Energy drink is great. If my opponent gets, ooh, and this may be an Alolan Ninetales deck as well. So maybe Shrine of Punishment will be helpful. Let's see what they put out there with Nest Ball. If they put out Alolan Vulpix, they don't want to put out Shuckle with the Nest Ball. You can't use its ability. So a Ditto Prism Star there. They could use that to evolve into Alolan Executor or something like Alolan Ninetales. So the energy drink there, like I was talking about, attach two basic energy cards from your discard pile, and they do not have any. Well, I can almost knock out the ditto. I am going to Guzma that up. And then use Field Crush. And that is it. So I can knock out the ditto next turn if my opponent doesn't evolve it. But another slow start. I need the draw support. There is really no option other than the let loose, the turn that I use the Cynthia. And you'd hope when you draw six new cards that you would get a supporter. I guess I did get the Guzma. So they're discarding Septile. Luckily I do not have any Ultra Beasts in my deck. I actually faced the Sceptile deck with my Blacephalon Naganadal deck. No way to attack at all. So my opponent may be just passing. They might not have anything after they go and get this Pokemon with the Ultra Ball. So this is an Alolan Executor deck. They would have to have an energy in hand and they're just going to attach to the active the choice band. Now they're going to probably retreat here or draw five new cards. They went with the five new cards. Hoping for an energy. Didn't get it yet. There is an energy with the net ball. One basic energy in the discard. So right now this would only do 20 damage. 40 so it's 20 plus. And there is the lily. I think I'm going to put down the other Blitzel, even though I don't want to, just to draw more cards. Well, I think I'll just go for three. I don't want to have two Blitzel on the bench just because I want to have multiple white Kyurem. Didn't draw into the fire energy that I was hoping for. So I'm going to have to use Field Crush again. So close to being able to do that 160 damage. Luckily a water type Pokemon like White Kyurem, not weak to grass type Pokemon. If my opponent had a Shuckle in hand, they could do much more damage with the Alolan Executor. My opponent is playing pretty slow. They're getting another energy on the Execute on the bench. And they are using Cynthia, so that was very useful. My opponent is doing much better than myself. This may be a loss again if I do not get any draw support or a fire energy. Do I have any energy at all in the discard? No. So if I was to make my own list for this deck, I think I would include a little bit more draw support. But we are maxed out at 4 Lily and 4 Cynthia. Still can't do anything. Luckily with 130 for the HP of White Kyurem, it still won't be knocked out. Done here. Almost forgot to attack. 160 for a Stage 1 is excellent. I haven't reviewed the Alolan Executor deck yet on my channel. May have to next. But I think I am going to have to end this video with a loss. My opponent is playing pretty slowly. Maybe they're doing 
a video like myself talking over every move. Still can't knock out the white Kiram like I mentioned. They'll be 10 short unless they have Kakui in the deck or an Ultra Ball or something to discard an additional energy. So 20 damage plus 20 more damage for each type of basic energy card in your discard pile. They only have the water energy in the discard pile, so they only can do 40 damage. And they have another Cynthia. I don't know why they're taking so long. Cynthia would be an easy option. Pull the trigger on that card right away. Probably get another Alolan Executor. They want to get an Ultra Ball and some other type of energy. There's the Ultra Ball. Are they going to be able to get a Grass Energy in the discard? They're probably going to go and get either the Grovile. There's a Fire Energy, so they can knock out the White Kiram. That is what they're going to do. Go and get Grovile, use Sunshine Grace, use its ability, Sunshine Grace, to go and get probably the Lurantis to increase the amount of damage that Grass-type Pokemon can do. Now they can do that again with this Grovile. Now they go and get the Lurantis. I pretty much guarantee it, and they do. 20 more damage for your Grass and Fire-type Pokemon. So it's probably game over for myself. You can see where this deck struggles. Now I can at least use Aqua Patch. Have to put out the White Kiram. There is a Cynthia, finally. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Rescue Stretcher, get the White Kiram back on my bench, use the Aqua Patch on it, accelerate that energy. Aqua Patch and then Cynthia. Need that Fire Energy. Cynthia here. Do I get it? I do not. How terrible is that? Well, at least I can put the Wish Baton there. Wish a baton there. Leave the Arceus Prism Star. This will hurt my opponent next turn. So I'm going to use Field Crush. Still two more attacks with Field Crush to knock out the Alolan Executor. I would need the Pheromosa in play. Another Cynthia. Talk about some luck from my opponent. Have they used all four Cynthia? They've used three already. They would not be able to knock out White Kiram, I don't think. What they're going to do now is they're going to retreat that Alolan Executor and put in their benched one. That way they get another. They actually can't do that yet just because they need three energy to retreat. There's a Marsh Shadow. That's actually very helpful because I'm going to use the Cyrus Prism Star and then the Let Loose. So let's do the Cyrus Prism Star. Hopefully they put both, I would say they're going to put both of the Grovile back into their deck. Ideally they would put that one right there is what I would say. So there, your opponent chooses two bench Pokemon and shuffles the other. So that's even better than I originally thought. And they just scooped. Look at that win. I think that is going to end this video, but that ruined my opponent's strategy. If I was able to get that fire energy on the let loose, I could have knocked out the Alolan Executor, and then my opponent didn't really have anything set up on their bench. So there is the power of the Cyrus Prison Star. End this video on a great note. So overall, I believe it was a winning record for this entire video. A couple of quick matches, but if you can get this deck set up, especially with that Arceus Prism Star attacking right away, doing 160 damage every turn with a non-GX is a great deck overall. But I think I am going to try and build the Alolan Executor deck in the future to see how that plays. Here's a look at the deck checklist again. Really, the only frustration that I had with the deck was not enough draw support. Of course, you try to get around that by using Sprint often. And then I guess you could include something like the Tate and Liza to draw cards. But there you have it. There's a look at the White Kiram deck that placed ninth at the Harrogate Regional Championships in England. So thanks everyone for watching.
As always, before you go, make sure to check out all the links in the description of this video, including links to my blog, Facebook, and Twitter pages. So thanks everyone for watching, and stay tuned for more videos. Thank you.